Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to import, make an edit and export your photos in Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Do the knee dance. Do the knee dance. The knee dance. Ooh. <laughs> the knee dance. Don't know what the knee dance is. Okay, so this is part three of my Photoshop training course. Now this is the last part of the quick start guide. After this, I'm gonna be going into loads of details to do with everything to do with Photoshop. So if you want to follow along, I'm gonna be putting all of these on YouTube in the next like, I don't know, however long I'll be making this for. But if you want the entire training course and all the source files, head over to photosincolor.com. So today essentially, we're gonna start off with Photoshop. We're gonna open something up in there, make a little edit, then export it, showing you the different ways of doing each one of those things. So let's jump into Photoshop and have a look. So, here we are inside Photoshop. Now when you first open it, it will look something like this, but if you, it's the very first time you've opened it, you won't have any files in here. So it will just be blank. Or you may have something like this, which is all of your different images that you've been working on. So. Two things that you're gonna to want to do and they're right here at the beginning, it's super simple. It's a new document or open a document. Now, to show you where you can also get these from, it goes file, okay, new and open, it's up here, or you've got command N or command O, depending, N for new, O for open. So first of all, let's do a new document. So I'm gonna go command N for new, and it's gonna bring up this dialog box. This is really simple here, you can, name your new project, so we could call this project one, for example, and then you've got a document type. Now usually just leave it at custom is the most simple thing to do because then you can define everything yourself. So you can choose your pixel size, so for example, I might have it 4000 by 4000 pixels, and you can change this to the side if you wanna work in inches and centimeters and everything. Remember you're working on a screen, so pixels is usually the way to go. And then you've got your resolution. So uh, for a monitor, I would go 96. Uh, 72 is standard, but 96 just means you've got a little bit higher pixel range. But if you're gonna do it for print, then I'd set that to say 300 or whatever your printer is. Now, you've got your color mode. Now this is automatically set to RGB, but you can change this to anything else down here. I would leave it on RGB and then eight bits so you've got all of your different options there. Bits mean, if you're importing an image like a raw file, it would be in 16-bit, but we're just gonna have 8-bit in there. Choose your background color, okay? I'd leave it at white or transparent, okay? Either one, I would say. And then you've got some advanced things here, which is what your color profiles you want to be in, but it should just be whatever you're working is, however you've set up your Photoshop, which is in my next tutorial. So. We've got all of that just there, and then you're gonna hit OK. And all it's gonna do is bring up this document, which is essentially your workspace. Now, let me just double U to get rid of that, so I've deleted that, and I'm gonna show you what happens to open. Command O, so now I can open a project or an image. And all, I have an image here, I just go through my documents and I can select whichever one I want, and then double click on it, and it's going to open it inside Photoshop. Now the final thing, way of doing it, is you can go to your computer, like so, and you can just drag and drop an image in. Simple. Now, if you're bringing in a raw photo, or this is a 16-bit photo, what Photoshop's usually going to do is it's going to bring up a, a Adobe Camera Raw. Now I have a tutorial coming up in, for this in the next few weeks, or you can download that tutorial on photosincolor.com right away. So I could come in here and make my settings. Okay, so this is just getting an image. So I'm gonna leave all the settings exactly as they are, and I'm gonna hit open image. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna say this is in a different color space. It may or not say this, this is just a notification, and I hit okay, and now I have my image. So. There were different ways of getting your image into Photoshop. So now we're here, now this is where all of the magic happens. Now my entire training course is gonna work, work through this, but for today, let's make a, let's really quickly do some things on this. We're gonna change her lip color. So I'm gonna zoom in on this image by hitting Command Plus, and then I'm going to make a selection here. I'm gonna use the Quick Selection tool on the left-hand side here. Now I'm gonna go fairly fast with this because 
I'm working on this image specifically. Now you can work along with me using this image if you download my training course and you get all of the project files. But there you go, we've got a quick selection of the lips. I'm gonna go to Refine Edge and Smart Radius and I'm just gonna quickly whip around the outside here just to make sure that I've got all of the lips that I, how I want them. Can change how I view it here. Great, I have her lips. That'll do for today. Little bit of a feather on there at the edge. I'm gonna hit okay. Now I've got this. And all I'm gonna do is add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. There we go. And now I have that, but it's on a selection. By hitting option and clicking on my layer mask, it's gonna show me what my mask looks like. So you can see it's just her lips. So by using this, I can just change the hue up here. And look, I can change just the color of her lips. And look how quickly I just did that. So we're gonna go for this really nice, vibrant purple. I really like that. I think she looks great. Let's go all the way there. Brilliant. And now, let me just make one other edit. We're gonna do all of her nails as well. And we're gonna reselect the background layer, quick selection tool, and I'm gonna go around all of her nails. Now, if you're working along with me, spend more time making these selections than what I am on this image. Um, and if you're doing your own images, obviously you're gonna make a far better job of this, making your selections. I'm just painting over these areas and I do have a tutorial all about making selections. So check that out as part of my course. There we go, so it's made some quick selections. Didn't do a perfect job. So I'm gonna to go to my lasso tool and make sure remove from selection. I'm just gonna go around each one of these areas again. I'm gonna do this really quickly so anybody watching doesn't get bored. <laughs> and that's those nails. You see we've got this section here. Uh, this section here. I want to add this in, so I go to my add selection and draw in that area. That'll do. Down here, and to remove this, because I'm on add, if I hold down option, it's going to allow me to remove. Okay, that'll do as a selection. Let me just add in there. That'll do. And then I'm just going to add a hue and saturation layer again. And now let's move this through. I'm going to boost my saturation of this one, because now we can see, ah, brilliant. That is pretty much matched. And there we go. Now you can see my um, layer masking is pretty terrible. <laughs> For this, I'll select my layer mask. I'll go to my brush tool, and I'm gonna make sure it's set to black, which it is, and I'm just gonna paint that out. Okay, that'll do for today, anyway. So let's zoom out. I now have three layers. First one is the background layer, and then I have my two hue saturation layers, which have changed my lip color. Now let's add one more thing before we export this, just so that you can see some elements in Photoshop. I'm gonna click on this, click text, type this here. Let's use the word color as we are, my channel is called Photos in Color. So let's do this. And fortunately, let's just make this a bit bigger here. Oh, I, I want to keep it square, so I'm actually gonna hold down, let me just pull this over here, I'm gonna hold down shift, make that nice and big at the top, I like that. Hit return, now I'm gonna change my color, my text, so I come to the text element, click on color, and now I'm gonna go through. They can see it's selecting the skin color because those colors were added on a hue saturation layer. So I'll hide the text, command shift E, okay, what's that gonna do? It's gonna flatten everything below. So now I have all of those done. So all I have to do now is I can select on this color picker and select on the nails and I can change the color of ooh, my text. Sorry, like so. So let's get one that fits. So I think, let's use the lips actually. Oh yeah, that looks really, really great. I'm just selecting around. I like this color here that fits in. Hit okay, new text layer again. So we're gonna click on this and I'm gonna call this magazine. So let's make a magazine cover. And we're gonna to change to ultra light. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, fair enough, <laughs> um, but I, this is just at the very beginning of my training course. So you're gonna learn how to do all of these things if you stay tuned to my YouTube channel. But you can also follow along with me and change this. Okay, so say, there you go, we're happy. What we've gone from 
is our beginning image. Okay, and then we've added on some color magazine and say this now looks a bit like a front cover. So say we're happy, we're done. Well, now what we need to do is get this out of Photoshop and be able to post it somewhere. So there's a few different things that we can do. Now, I did flatten these layers before, so those color layers, but say that I didn't flatten those and I had all of my other layers that were available. What I would do is if I hit Command S, that's going to save this, okay? And it's gonna bring up this dialog box here and you can see at the bottom I have different formats. Now, Photoshop means it's gonna save all of these layers. And basically it means that you can only open the image in Photoshop. But that's perfect for me if you want to make edits in the future. Like for example, come in here and go, you know what? I want to change this text color uh, on the color one here and I wanna make it blue. Okay, so I could go, okay, this is what I actually want my magazine cover to look like. And then I could go in and save another version like so. So you can see that that's really good. Now another way of saving, they're all up here, it goes save, save as, and then export, okay? And that's what's really important. So Command S is save. So that just allows you to come in here and you can go, well, I want to save it as a JPEG, for example, <clears throat> and I'm gonna save it like that. Or if I hit Command Shift S, that's gonna be save as, and what that will do is if you've already saved it, it's saving another version of it, a second version, and you can change the format just down here. So that's a really good way of doing it. But the most important thing, and then what people usually want to save things as, is a JPEG to use online, okay? Now, you can just go up here and go File, Save As, and then at the bottom here, select JPEG. Okay, so let's do that. And we're gonna just call this Color Magazine. Okay, and let's show you what happens when that happens. I click on this, hit save, and it's gonna bring up this dialog box to say well, what quality. So let's go 100% and hit okay. And now when I actually go and look at this image, so here it is just here, let's have a look at the file type here. It's six megabytes. Now if I wanted to post that to my website, that's gonna be way too big and slow down my website. So I might want to see the smaller version. So to do that, what I'd go for is file, export and export for web, okay? Or you can hit Command Option Shift S is, a, is the shortcut to do this. And then we get this brought up. Now, what's really great about this is I can change my different formats that work online. So let's keep it as JPEG. But now if you look, it's gonna tell me how big the file size is because I've shrunk my quality to 50%, okay? Now that's not half the size, it's a lot less than half, half the size. If you go from 100% just to 80%, you'll see that halves it with just 20 down there. Anyways, you can change the quality, but I might not need it to be this huge image. I might only want my height of this to be say 1000 pixels. So now if I make that, if you watch what happens, 100% this is now only this big. So it's still very, it's still a big enough image, it's gonna fill up anybody's screen. But now at 80%, it's only now 181 kilobytes, which means it's gonna work incredibly fast online. And I can go a lot smaller than that if I wanted it to be a thumbnail. A thumbnail might only be 400 pixels online. So then it's gonna be like this, still looks fantastic. It's only 40 kilobytes right now. So now if I hit save, okay, it's now gonna save it here and let's call it Color Magazine Web, hit save. And now when we actually come out and look at this, we can see this is the large one and then this is my smaller one. And if I zoom in on the smaller one, you can see it's reduced the quality. But what's important here, this may be reduced in quality, but I can save this image as a Photoshop file. So let's do that. I'm just gonna hit save. It's gonna do it as a Photoshop file inside there. And it's gonna say, it's gonna keep all my layers. Now, if I close this down, so I've completely got rid of that, and now when I open this PSD file, if you look what this looks like, it's going to have my layers, oh, let me just get rid of all that stuff, my layers that I can still go in and I can edit to be however I want it again and again in the future. So, there you go. So that there is how you import an image or start a new document, how you can make some little changes that I did there, I created a magazine cover, 
and then how you export it either as a JPEG, a Photoshop file, or all of these other different files as well, but mainly so that you can get things online. That's really important. Anyway, if you like this tutorial, give me a huge thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads and loads more videos coming in the future. And also, if you want this uh, project file and all my other project files, then definitely go to photosyncolor.com. The link is in the description and get my training course. Thank you so much for watching. This is Ed Gregory for photosyncolor.com. Theme tune.